Hi, have you ever wondered how cells of the immune system are able to attack foreign cells like viruses and bacteria? Some cells can use various methods such as ion pumps, voltage gated channels, or even osmosis to pull smaller molecules and chemicals across the plasma membrane and into their cytoplasm. But larger objects like viruses and bacteria are too large to transport through the plasma membrane. So cells would have to engulf these microbes and pull them in, which is generally called endocytosis. However, there are many different types of endocytosis and phagocytosis is one of them. Now, what is phagocytosis? Phagocytosis is basically a process where a cell binds to item it wants to engulf on the cell surface. It draws it in and then forms a membrane around it. The process of phagocytosis often happens when the cell is trying to destroy something, like a virus or an infected cell and is often used by immune system cells. Now, phagocytosis differs from other methods of endocytosis because it is very specific and depends on the cell being able to bind to the item it wants to engulf by using cell surface receptors. Now let's look at a few cell surface receptors. We start with opsonin receptors. So opsonin receptors are used to bind bacteria or other particles that have been coated with immunoglobulin G or IgG antibodies by the immune system. The immune system coats potential threats with antibodies so that other cells would recognize them and destroy them. The immune system can also use something called the complement system, which is basically a group of proteins used to tag the bacteria. So the complement system is another way for the immune system to destroy pathogens and threats to the host. Now the next type or the next group of cell surface receptors are the scavenger receptors. Now scavenger receptors bind to molecules that are produced by bacteria. Most bacteria and other cellular species produce a matrix of proteins surrounding themselves and this is called the extracellular matrix. This matrix is a perfect way for the immune system to identify foreign species in the body. And this is because human cells do not produce that kind of protein matrix. Another group of cell surface receptors are the toe-like receptors or the TLRs. Now the toe-like receptors are a key part of the innate immune system because once they, they are bound to a bacterial pathogen, they recognize the specific bacteria and activate the immune response. There are lots of different types of toe-like receptors produced by the body and they are all different because they bind to different molecules. Next type of cell surface receptors are the antibodies. Some immune cells make antibodies that can bind to specific antigens. Antigens are molecules that act like informants or informants. This is because they help the immune system to know which cells to attack. Now let's look at how phagocytosis actually occur. Immune cells have to complete some steps in order to successfully engulf microbes or phagocytize microbes. The virus and the cell need to come into contact with each other. Sometimes the immune cell accidentally bumps into the virus in the bloodstream. At other times, cells move by chemotaxis. Now, chemotaxis means that the, the cells or the immune cells move in response to chemical attraction. 
many immune system cells move in response to cytokines. These are small proteins used specifically for cell signaling. Cytokines signal cells to move to a certain area in the body where the microbe, in this case the virus, is found. The virus then binds to the cell surface receptors of the macrophage. The macrophage will not initiate phagocytosis without successful binding of the cell surface receptors. Viruses can also have surface receptors which can be specific to those on the macrophage. Now viruses need to access the host cell's cytoplasm or nucleus in order to replicate and cause an infection. So they use their surface receptors to interact with the immune system cells and exploit the immune response for entry into the cell. Sometimes when a virus and a host cell interacts, the host cell is able to successfully destroy the virus and stop the spread of the infection. At other times, the host cell engulfs the virus and the virus tricks the cell or the host cell, gaining access to what it needs in order to replicate. Once this happens, the infected cell is identified and destroyed by other cells of the immune system in order to stop viral replication and infection. Instead of moving the large item, in this case the microbe, across the plasma membrane, which might damage the membrane permanently, phagocytosis uses extensions of the cytoplasm called the pseudopods to surround the particle and enclose it in a, mem a membrane. So it basically forms a membrane around the microbe. So the macrophage and the virus bound at the cell surface and the pseudopods protrude outward on either side of the virus until both sides meet and the virus is enclosed. The cell pulls the virus inward, creating a pocket-like indentation without damaging the plasma membrane. It is able to do that because the cells are reasonably flexible and fluid. Now the lips of the pocket formed as a result of the extensions of the pseudopods extend towards each other in order to close the gap. This action creates a phagosome where the plasma membrane has moved around the particle encasing it safely inside the cell. Lysosomes are also bubble-like structures similar to phagosomes which process wastes inside the cell. Lysis means to break down something and this makes it easy to remember the function of lysosome. Without fusing with the lysosome, the phagosome wouldn't be able to do anything with the content inside. So the phagosome fuses with the lysosome to form a phagolysosome. Now the phagolysosome drastically lowers the pH of its internal environment. Lowering of the pH makes the environment inside the phagolysosome very acidic. This is an effective way of killing or neutralizing whatever is inside the phagolysosome so it cannot infect the cell. Once the contents have been neutralized, the phagolysosome forms a residual body that contains the waste products from the phagolysosome. Now the residual body is eventually discharged from the cell. Phagocytosis is a critical part of the immune system. Several types of cells of the immune system perform phagocytosis and some of these cells are the neutrophils, the macrophages, dendritic cells and the B lymphocytes. The act of phagocytizing pathogenic or foreign particles allows cells of the immune system 
to know what they are fighting against. By knowing the enemy, the cells of the immune system can specifically target similar particles circulating in the body. Now, we mentioned earlier that the phagolysosome creates an acidic environment to destroy or neutralize its contents. The immune system cells that perform phagocytosis can also use other mechanisms to destroy pathogens inside the phagolysosome, such as oxygen radicals. Now, oxygen radicals are highly reactive molecules that react with proteins, lipids, and other biological molecules. During physiological stress, the amount of oxygen radicals in a cell can increase dramatically, causing oxidative stress, which can destroy cell structures. Another mechanism involves nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is a reactive substance similar to oxygen radicals that reacts with superoxide to create further molecules that damage various biological molecules. Also used for this purpose are antimicrobial proteins. Now, antimicrobial proteins are proteins that specifically damage or kill bacteria. Examples of antimicrobial proteins include proteases, which kill various bacteria by destroying essential proteins and lysozyme, which attacks the cell walls of gram-positive bacteria. Immune cells also use antimicrobial peptides or antimicrobial peptides. Now, antimicrobial peptides are similar to antimicrobial proteins in that they also attack and kill the bacteria. Some antimicrobial peptides, like defensins, attack bacterial cell membranes. And finally, immune cells can also use binding proteins. Binding proteins are often important players in the innate immune system because they competitively bind to proteins or ions that would have otherwise been beneficial to bacteria or viral replication. An example is lactoferrin, which is a binding protein found in mucosal membranes. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. More videos coming up. See you in the next one.